Hey friends and welcome back to my channel. I was very anxious to review this palette, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Looking at the new nude from Huda Beauty. Swatches, shade descriptions, and an eye demo, then please keep on watching. If it's your first time here, welcome. My name is Alicia. Kinky Sweat is the name of my platform where I combine my love of movement and beauty. I mostly have my movement content on Instagram, but I'm looking to intersect them. So I have a little bit of both equally on both platforms you like my nails i wanted to have a shade that falls similar to the new nude color scheme this is kl polish in the shade jane this is from her fall in the city collection i think it is a really beautiful deep mauve and i think will look really nice with the new new you know what i'm saying here is the outer packaging that is kind of like a transparent type of thing because you see that the palette inside she's like peeking through this palette retails for 60 wrong way this palette retails for 65 dollars i think it is quite expensive maybe if it was fitty it does come with 18 shadows and if we were to break it down 65 divided by 18 we're looking at three dollars and six cents per eyeshadow and given that they are different textures in this palette ranging from matte pearl to special wizard textures then i yes it's it's worth it if you break it down like that, I guess. Some packaging details. The shelf life for this eyeshadow palette is 12 months, made in Italy. The net weight here is 19.7 grams in all, 0.69 ounces. What is that per eyeshadow pan, may I ask? Looking at 1.09, so 1.1 grams per pan for the grams and we're looking at 0.3 ounces per pan for the ounces introducing the huda beauty new nude eyeshadow palette huda's fresh take on the nude look 18 gorgeous shades ranging from cool to warm tones including 10 buttery mattes that blend seamlessly with your skin i have to say the matte formula here is nice four multi-reflective shadows with a versatile pearly to iridescent finish two pressed glitters for an opulent touch, one pressed pearl for a velvety shine, one concealer base to make your shadows pop. From minimalist, I woke up like this look to a show-stopping iridescent lid. This eyeshadow palette is your new must-have to enhance your beauty on any occasion. I'll give her that. She really tried to kind of create a wide spectrum of looks choices one can make if you wanted to be swapped about it or like wham bam bam about it i'm like trying to open this carefully because like my nails are dry but you know not dry enough to get crazy with opening this package you know what i'm saying here is the actual palette i i know she loves to put her face on everything but i could have done like the palette without her face and maybe just having it all iridescent with the new nude lettering on it i'm just saying because you have her face again with the overlay so it's like you got huda here you got huda there huda there huda there it's just a lot of huda you know what i'm saying maybe i don't know how much the printing costs if she could have like left the printing out of the the lid and maybe it would have been cheaper i don't know i also will go on her website to get details on the formula because i saw like one episode of her facebook show that she had and i remember she was saying how her products are expensive because she insists on having immaculate formulas for all her cosmetics the matte shadows are formulated with aloe vera and coconut oil for butter-like application you see what i'm saying the four reflective shades Feature shimmering pearl flex for a gorgeous duo chromatic finish. The two glitter formulas are infused with innovative silicones for advanced adherence, pigment dispersion, and luminosity. And the one pressed pearl in here is combined with acacia, jojoba, and sunflower wax for a high shimmer finish that layers effortlessly on top of mattes, adding dreamy depth and dimension. One concealer base for flawless application and to boost eyeshadow. This eyeshadow palette also launched with three dual-sided brushes that I'm definitely not gonna buy. <laughs> when you have Wayne and Sonia on your side, I mean, you really don't need anyone else. That's just gonna leave it at that. Here is the inside of the palette. I love this. I love mauves, I love tans, I love beiges, lilacs, roses. Just just a few comparisons. The one palette in my mind that stood out as a direct dupe of the new nude is the ColourPop Give It To Me Straight. I mean, 
let me hold on the give it to me straight from ColourPop is basically a very edited down version of the new nude because you still have the mauves here coming closer you still got the mauves you got your brown and tans same thing here you got the browns and tans and the mauves now the one standout difference between give it to me straight and new nude is that new nude has like the fun reflective dual chrome shades and give it to me straight has your standard metallic shimmer formula for ColourPop, which i really love if you already have this palette Technically, in terms of color story, you don't need the new nude, but if you want to experience these crazy shades, then yeah, you're not gonna get that in the ColourPop palette. I also picked up Naked Cherry. Why did I do that? You wanna see a video dedicated to swatches and a look from Naked Cherry, then let me know down below. Again, standout difference between Naked Cherry and the new nude is that Naked Cherry, I feel, is more of a matte story and the new nude has, again, the crazy duochromatic standout shades that Naked Cherry really doesn't have. And I have to say that from playing with Naked Cherry, the metallics and the shimmers are okay. I feel the ones from Heat are a lot better. They have a lot more body and creaminess to them. But it's I, you know what I'm saying? I still wanted it because I love the color story, again, with the mauves and the lilacs and the browns. So, you know, we're gonna get into it. I'm kind of sad that Huda Beauty doesn't do shade description breakdowns like Natasha Denona does <laughs> because I'm left to my own devices in describing these shades. That's pretty much why I'm complaining about it. But we're gonna get through this, friends. Also, palette has a mirror, which I think is a great size. It comes edge to edge far enough that I feel... Uh, presents a really big size mirror to do your whole face makeup in and each pan has the shades under it so you kind of can see without flipping to the back. The back doesn't even have the shades anyway so it makes it very convenient to use. Base is your matte base shade. <laughs> How am I doing so far? Crappy? I thought so. Here is the first duochromatic special shade. This is Crave. Really beautiful duochromatic shiny shade that applies quite smoothly. It flips from it flips from like a rose gold to like a champagne. And the little flex in here is hard to see. I try I won't try to blind you with the mirror, but in the pan you kind of see that there are these pieces of iridescent pearl pigments in the actual shiny shade that when combined gives off a really high reflective finish but still smooth at the same time next up we have play which is a light pink beige our second draw chromatic shade is fantasy Ooh, that one's really gorgeous if I needed to say, let's see, we're looking at a, like a magenta type of red situation here. Love Bite, which is the deepest matte shade in the palette. Uh, right off the bat, reminds me of ColourPop's, do I have it here? <sighs> well, what do you know? I do. 143. Love Bite is a little deeper than 143, actually. 143 is like more purple, and Love Bite has a little more intensity to it. Spanked is a deep mauve matte. I'm gonna have to switch arms. I am swatching with my left, and it feels so awkward. I didn't wanna swatch it with my watch in the way, but you know what? That's what I'm gonna have to do. That was the first row. Let's move on to the second. Lace is a soft lilac matte shade. Daydream is the third duochromatic special shade here Ooh, that's really pretty that's definitely shifting from like a soft pink iridescent type of color sitch and the sun changing on me again great tickle is their matte and this is like a nice deep rose shade excite their first glitter Ooh, that's pretty i tried the glitters i'm not a fan of them on my lid because they do get everywhere and despite the fact that the formula yields a more adherent experience i rather just pop it on my lower lash line and i think it's just easier to clean but i would recommend if you insist on applying these on your lip that you use tape first to take the majority of the glitter off and then move into your makeup remover step with the cotton flats and all that stuff this is like a deep red glitter shade last glitter shade we got is infatuated this takes more of a pinky hue really shiny really pretty do be careful if you get this palette that you don't jam your finger into the pan because it does have some give it kind of like the special duochromatic shades take on that color pop 
uh, super shock shadow feel like that bouncy texture this has uh, a similar bouncy texture to the pan it's shiny though it's really it's a beautiful color actually kinky which is the one pearl shadow in here gorgeous color beautiful saturation it's like a nice metallic mauvey wine last row this is the concealed shade and i'm swatching it for you anyway because i actually really like that she put this in here and i say that because i am so bad at cut creases but because this concealed formula is tighter and drier it makes it easy to just stamp your flat synthetic on the lid to kind of map out a better highlighted base for any of the dual chrome shades in here or even the glitter ones. I think it's easy for me to use. I really like it. The problem with having a texture like this in an eyeshadow palette is that you will get powder all over it and because it is sticky, it's going to get like, you know, crazy i would just put some tape on it or something to cover that pan up so it doesn't get as dirty quickly i don't find it to be a big deal but if you are worried about that situation i will keep that in mind i haven't been doing this i'm so sorry i'm just gonna put a little graph of the eyeshadow palette next to me while i edit this now we got secret what is secret what can we say secret is oh it's like a soft rose shade matte Okay, switching arms because I'm running out of room. Now we got Tees. Tees is, it looks more brown in nature. I was gonna say a deep lilac, but maybe a more deep lavender shade with a touch of brown. We have Raw. Ooh, I think this perhaps is the warmest shade matte out of the palette. It's like a warm, deep rose shade. Last Dior Chrome shade we have is Charmed. This one is really shiny. Look at that. I think that's probably my favorite duochrome shade out of the bunch in this palette. The reflectivity is gorgeous. The shine, spectacular. Texture smooth. I really like this shade. Again, my favorite out of the palette. And lastly, we have Teddy. Teddy, definitely soft mauve matte. Those are the swatches, my friends. I hope they were helpful. And now that we got those out of the way. Mm-hmm. I will definitely come on here again if you want me to do another look using this palette. I know we want to see maybe these pink your shades. And another reason why I really wanted to review this palette is because if you are my skin tone, tan, uh, a little lighter, a little deeper, and if you're curious to see how saturated these shades look on tan skin, then I wanted to help you guys out. Now from using this palette, I did discover because they have a lot of slip to them, if you are accustomed to powdering down your lid, I would skip that step. I would go in with either your primer, whether it's your P. Louise or your Urban Decay, or whatever you love to use, or concealer, let it dry down and don't powder it. Because I feel if you apply these shadows on a powdered lid, it's gonna be way too much slip and the color won't grab and it'll look very faded and sheer. That's my one warning about using these mattes. But because they are created with a lot of glide, I do feel when you brush on a concealed base that you're not gonna get skips or drags. I'm gonna go in with a little more of my Born This Way Too Faced Concealer. This is in this shade, shade Sand. I did apply some while applying concealer under my eyes. Just wanna put a little more. And again, you have the concealed base in in here but it doesn't have is not creamy like this formula i feel it's just suitable to carve out your lid or to give your halo eye a pop before you go in with the duochrome shades first going in with tickle with my wing number four i'm gonna dab 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 and this is what i did the other day when using the shade now, unfortunately, this does have a lot of kickback. So you see the kickback kind of fell into the pan over. You know, what are you going to do? I stamped this first onto my crease because I'll tell you why. I'm going to do the other eye. If I start blending, I felt that I wasn't getting the same color payoff. Or maybe I do. I don't know. It could have been that day... I powdered my lid by accident because once I powder my under eyes, I just automatically go on my lid to kind of set my brows. But I think this is actually working out pretty well. And it looks pink. It doesn't look too sheer, which is something I was concerned about 
when I saw these shades. And again, they have really beautiful glide. And even though we went on an unset concealed lid, I don't feel the shadow is skipping. It's not applying unevenly. It looks very pink. Pretty young. I want to now move into the Swafza mauve shades just to kind of see how they blend out. Unfortunately, look how messy this got. It's hard to see, but tickled went everywhere. I'm going to take a tissue and I'm just going to pat down on the palette carefully just to kind of take off all that dust. I want to go in with Teddy using my way number 16. Make sure I wipe that off. Here we go. And now blend out Tickle. Now for the sake of demoing, I am leaving after I film this video, but I kind of just want you to see how Lace does. Because Lace looked like one of those shades, is that going to do much on me? It kind of does. I'm going to take it on my same Wayne number 16. And it adds a nice lavender purpley touch to tickle when you apply it on this shade. It changes it a little bit. So you see how that turned it more purple and this stayed more pink. It's up to you as to how you want to take your look. And it's good that she has a few transition shades in here to kind of give you a little more versatile or versatility, I should say, with your eye look. Same brush, wiped it off. Going back with Teddy on this eye. Just blending that out a little more. Cool, man, I think it looks pretty good. Now, of course, I'm gonna go in with my Sonya G. Worker one. Make sure and that's wiped and clean. Definitely now I wanna go in with raw. Or do I wanna go in with, hmm, the problem with, having 18 shades is that i kind of want to use them all at once but that's not gonna work alicia i want to use spanked we're gonna use spanked i want to first pat that down to get the color onto my outer corner first and i feel this shade builds up the saturation of the pink if you want to create a pink look then use spanked if you want it to be a little warmer then i probably would recommend raw and i'm using the tip of worker one just to pull it out a little bit bring it into the crease a little bit as well and now to add some depth moving in to love bite i'm going to use the same brush see what we could build here with this shade I'm going to use small circular motions to pull out the shade a little bit. How's that looking? I think it looks pretty good. Now, I will say if there's one gripe I have with the palette is that this is as deep as it's going to go. But if you want that intensity, then you definitely have to dip out use a deeper plummy shade like you know extreme aubergine from bronze seduction if you have pat's palette or a very deep eggplant color to further intensify the v if you want going back with my number 16 to just blur out any harsh lines that might have been left behind and now i think i want to use another color for the lower lash line i'm going to go in with tease i'm going to use the same worker one because this shade intrigues me Oh, got a little crazy, got a little crazy. Make sure you tap off your brush because there is a lot of kickback with these mattes, man. Nice looking sick, literally. Then I might go in with Secret, this shade here, to blend out what we just applied to the lower lash line. I'm going to go in with my number four because I think that's just going to control the, the intensity of the lower lash line and not make it too crazy. I'm going to blend that out. I also want to go back in with Love Bite using my Worker One. Or was it Spanked? Ah, a little bit of both. To the inner third of my lid because I think I want to do my halo. But I want to show how I use the concealer from the palette. Going in with my Morphe M421, one of my go-to brushes that I use to carve out my lid with. Now with Concealed. But this is how I do it. I wiggle my brush in here well. It's a dry formula, so I just stamp. I go boop, boop, and I use the edge of the brush to just lightly map out 
the top of my crease and then I use my finger to smooth it out. See, done. That's as defined as it's gonna get on my lids. If you want a cleaner, crisper line, then definitely rely on your liquid concealer because if you try to do this with the formula, it's gonna drag and probably move around the matte shadow initially placed. Patting down motions with this formula, I feel is best. I'm actually gonna put some on my lower lash line because I think I'm gonna put one of the glitters here. Now, just so you can see, I have the Makeup Forever silicone tip brush. This is the 224. It has a flat side, a thin flat side, and a wide flat side, and I think it's similar to like the Finger Blender, whatever brush that she also sells with the palette. I'm gonna use this on one eye and my finger on the other just so you can have any idea of the difference. Definitely going in with Charmed, because this is my favorite. And I'm gonna take that on my lid. I think this is like, a gorgeous shade and I find this silicone tip really helps especially if you you know if you have long nails or you just don't want to use your finger the tip of the brush I feel helps to neatly carve out any lines that you have on the lid so that is charmed going with my finger I do feel as much as I love my 224 that with these shadows the warmth of your finger, I feel, melts the iridescent particles better with the pigment and that you get a more high shine finish. But it could be me, so this is with my finger and this is with the silicone applicator. What do you think? I'm going back in, actually I'm going to use my Sonia G Pencil 1 with Love, ah, a little bit of Spank and Love Bite and just carefully pat down the corners or I should say the borders of where the matte and duochrome shade meet on my eyes. And maybe just take the tip of the brush and carefully clean up here on my crease. I feel because these have such extreme shine that when you layer on the glitters, it's a little much for me. I'm gonna dip out of the brand for a second and show you the diamond lip powders from Makeup Forever that are like to die for. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my pinky with Infatuated and I'm just gonna gently, very gently, press that to my lower lash line because i typically like glitter or something shiny under my lash line i think it has a nice touch to the look that's as glittery as it's gonna get on me so da -da -da -da. now to introduce to you the new starlit diamond powder from makeup forever i got this yesterday and oh my goodness the reflectivity of this freaking shade first of all are you even ready like what is that? I am going to take my finger and just press it on top of Charmed. And look how that just bumped it up. We're getting amplification here, man. Ooh, that's pretty. Now with my 16, I'm just feathering out the very tip of the shadow to clean it up a bit. Applied some mascara, and now I'm gonna go in with the shade Crave with my pinky and use that as our inner corner highlight. Oh yeah. Mm. Let's put on some lipstick. Go my huge. And why not? We'll put a little gloss today. This is a mini Charlotte Tilbury gloss in Blondie. I saw it at Nordstrom and I just lost all control. It was a mini. I couldn't help myself. That's the center. Cleaning up a little bit with Versatile Chestnut. And here's the finished look. How do you like it? From using this palette a few times and doing this demo, I could say that I really love this palette. In terms of the wide spectrum of colors and undertones, whether it be soft lilac, mauve, rose, or tan, I think you have a wide variety of looks you could create with this palette. As well as the textures, I'm very pleased with these iridescent pearl finishes. I know in the past she has struggled with creating a formula that was consistent, that was easy to use. She wanted to present, you know, those high shine, duochromatic finishes, and it's tough, right? I think they are absolutely gorgeous, and they're easy to use. I find these ones, uh, this time around, are much easier to use, whether you have a silicone applicator or just your finger. I think they leave a beautiful finish on the lids. And yeah, this pearlescent duochrome thing she got going on is going on. And I love these shades. I tend to 
gravitate towards them because I think it is a nice escape from the usual warm orange terracotta shades that I also love. And people would think, new nude, well, where's the nude? I think she was trying to probably work from a mindset type of concept versus like a color scheme concept. I think she's thinking more romantic, more rose tones. Uh, nude is a, a feel, again, a mindset. And that nude can mean several things to everyone. I get it upon first glance, you're like, purples? Nude? I don't understand. I love the mauves and the rose shades in here and I also love that she included the glitter shades that again if you're not too crazy about using glitter I would just reserve them to the lower lash line maybe the inner corner to give that part of your eye an extra pop an extra gleam if i were to put these on top of the duochrome shades i would really just apply it to the base of my lash line so it looks like a little bit of an explosion of glitter because i feel like you get a little crazy with the duochrome texture and then you got the glitter texture it's like a lot on your lid and although she had wanted to formulate them so they could adhere well without the use of glitter glue i think you still need a little bit of attack whether it's from glitter glue, a concealer, or something so it doesn't fall on your face throughout the day. When I popped the glitter on my lower lash line uh, when I had used this palette before, I feel it does stay here and it doesn't travel, so that's good. But I also use very little, so I think if you find, again, the right base, if you use the right amount, then you're in the clear. Also, the longevity is pretty good. The saturation of the matte stayed true throughout the day, and also the shine of the duochromes were good. I will say after the five hour mark, it did, the saturation, the pigmentation started to fade, but the iridescent flex, that gleam, still existed on my lid. So I would say the mattes have a better staying powder than duochrome shades, but if you wanted to amplify the staying power, maybe instead of using the concealed base provided or your concealer, you just pop a little bit of glitter glue, just a little bit to make it adhere longer. Let me know down below if you picked up the new nude from Huda Beauty, what you think about it, and if you've been using it, what your favorite colors are, and we'll take it from there. And that, my friends, is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And until then, I'll see you on here again with another tutorial, demo, chit chat, or review. Take care and I'll see you again soon.